Ladies and gentlemen, waiting lists and the fact that one in seven people are on a waiting list right now in this country dominated the headlines last week. Many of those who are waiting for treatment are in pain and people want to know what can be done to address the problem. Well you know there is some light at the end of the tunnel. For example how many of you listening this morning have heard of the Cross Border Healthcare Directive? Kathleen joins us in our Monaghan studios. Good morning to you Kathleen. Good morning Joe. And thank you so much for coming in to see us. You can hear me all right? Yes. Perfect, perfect. So then, um, in your case, it was a problem with the knee, is that correct? Yes. Tell me a little yes. bit about the problem. Well, I had a lot of pain in the knee for over two or three years, and uh, I had attended Monaghan Hospital, and uh, I was on a waiting list, and when I went to see the consultant before Christmas, he told me I had my x-ray done and he looked at it and he told me I had too much weight on and that he couldn't operate. Okay. And I was only about 12 stone, 13 pound, and I still had to get down to 12 and a half stone. So he, he said to cut down on the food and to exercise and uh, to write to him when I had the weight off. Mm-hmm. So I went home and uh, I just felt I couldn't exercise because with the severe pain in the knee. So I had then later been talking to Podge Connolly. I explained the situation to him that I couldn't get the weight off and was there any other scheme available All that right. I could go. All right, just to stop you there. So yep. he advised you, I can't even contemplate operating on the knee until you lose some weight. I mean, yes. that sounds rather strange when uh, because of the pain and because yes. of the fact that the problem was quite debilitating, the chances of you losing the weight very, very slim. So that must have left you feeling rather dejected. I didn't know what way to turn because yeah. the pain was so severe that I went out the door of the hospital crying, actually, because I said to myself, there's no way now I'm going to get this operation done. I know. So Anyway, then- and Podge Connolly, just so that listeners know, people in Monaghan and uh, Cavan will know Podge very well. He's a yes. former TD for the Cavan That's Monaghan right. constituency. He's now an independent councillor in the Monaghan area. So he brought the... Um, cross-border health care directive to your attention and I know also a member of your family had also um, done some research on this as well yes yes well when I talked to Podge and explained to him he said leave it with me I'll get back to you in a couple of days he got back to me and he gave me the number of the cross-border and he said ring them and explain the situation and I did that and they sent me out the application form Right. And when I got the application form, I had to get a letter from my doctor and uh, I got the x-ray done in Monaghan again and I got it on a disc and I got it and had it with me. Got my son to look up uh, the hospitals available in the north and we came across the cross-border private hospital or the the other hospital, the Kingsbridge Hospital, private in, hospital. In Belfast. In Belfast, mm-hmm. and they specialise in this cross-border. They were trying to promote it, actually, it said, and uh, rang them, and uh, I had my appointment inside of a week, went down, saw the surgeon, and he couldn't get over how bad the knee was when he saw the disc, and he said, if I had a cancellation, I would give it to you straight away, but he said, we will have to... To, to work on this, he said, and they had me had a pre op inside of a week, and I was in the hospital then uh, two weeks later and had my operation done and in, out in five days. All right, so from the moment you first made contact uh, with the Kingsbridge Private Hospital in Belfast till the day you were. Um, discharged from hospital with procedure having been completed successfully. What are we talking about time-wise? About a month's time. All right. So in one month, you're dealt with, problem solved. That was when? When did the operation happen? I had it on the 6th of March. All right. And here we are now. Here we are in the month of August. How are you doing? Great. 
You're in great, great form. Back at work and no problem, no pain in the knee at all as well. So, so you are delighted. totally, completely pain-free. Free, yes, yeah. And what you were looking at prior to you buying into this scheme, and we'll talk about that in a moment, what you were looking at was quite a long period of time probably on a waiting list. And during well, that time, obviously, you would have been in severe pain. But talk yeah. to me a little bit about um, the cost. I know you don't mind me sharing the cost yeah. with listeners. Um, the cost somewhere in the region of €9,000. We'll be talking more about how the scheme works in a moment. Yeah. Uh, and, but uh, do you mind me asking, uh, how did you access those funds? Well, it was 9,000 sterling, actually. Right. 9,000 so, sterling, sorry. Be, yeah, be the equivalent of about 10,500. Right. So uh, I approached the credit union and uh, they said there was no problem. So I had got my loan and uh, had my uh, money down with me that morning, a check. Right. And, so when uh, you went to Kingsbridge for the first yeah. uh, for the uh, for the operation for the procedure, you, yes. you had with you the funds uh, yes. which you had borrowed from your local credit union. credit union. And I understand that a large number of credit unions are facilitating what is in effect a bridging loan, isn't it? Yes, yes. Because you take out the money, you pay the bill. And then yeah. you submit the bill to the HSE under this scheme and they refund you. Is that the way it works? Yes, that's it, yeah. Right. So, yeah. so where are you now with that process? Have they already refunded you? I was uh, reimbursed 12 weeks later and they paid into your account in the bank. Yeah. Right. And now you therefore have reimbursed your credit union? Yes, yeah. Right. So the loan is paid in full. Everything's paid off. Nothing to worry about. Yes. And you're happy, happy, happy. Happy, uh, yeah. Right. The only right. thing I have, to, I have the other need to get done. Oh, no, <laughs> Kathleen. Yep. They've, they've advised you the other knee needs to be worked on as well. Yeah, he told me that as well, but he said to leave it as long as possible. But he said there is no problem. He says we will go down the same road again, he said. Right. And when is that planned or planned for? Well, I wait for it to next year, All hopefully, right. okay. that I'll, I'll get funded. <laughs> All right. Well, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the Cross-Border uh, Healthcare Directive. And it's a scheme that is now in place. It allows EU residents to access health services in EU member states other than their own. And it entitles, for example, this is operated by the HSE here in Ireland, and it entitles Irish patients waiting for surgery procedures in the Republic of Ireland to obtain treatment in either a public or private setting within Northern Ireland, if that's what you would like to do. And I'm, I'm, I, if, that, if, if that's what you would like to do, and I'm very conscious of the fact you're in Monaghan, Kathleen, so yes. Monaghan to Belfast, an hour. An hour down the road, yep. An hour down the road. Yep. Right on your doorstep, in in other words. Yes. All right, then. Well, I want to find out more about this. Mark Regan. Stay where you are, Kathleen. Uh, Mark Regan is the chief executive of the Kingsbridge Private Hospital in Belfast, and he's with me on the line. Good morning to you. You're there, Mark? Hello, good morning. Good thank morning. You, thank you indeed for, for taking the call. In a way, Most it welcome. just... All sounds too good to be true. Mm. Well, they're the words that I frequently use when I, I speak about this, either to GPs, public, or, or on numerous radio stations. Um, it is too good to be true, but it's not, I can assure you. We have had thousands of patients coming through the system in Belfast and treated exactly the same as Kathleen, refunded their money in full or nearly in full, and returning home to enjoy the quality of life they deserve. But uh, what is the take-up like uh, for the scheme? The fact that you're prepared to do interviews to to tell the world about it tells me that uh, you're not snowed under. Well, capacity in the organisation in the hospital that I work for is a word that we never say no to. We always flex our capacity up and down. So there is no limit to the number of patients that we can take within reason. And there is certainly capacity to see any number of people coming from the site that wish to avail of this scheme. And, and by capacity, I mean people could be having surgery within consultation within a week or so and could be having surgery within two or three weeks. Yeah, and so 
no waiting list is starting to form at this moment in time, even on your end of things. Based Absolutely not. But and my role is to make sure that that never is the case. All right, so tell me a little bit about the directive. As, as I mentioned there, there is this arrangement in place between the HSE uh, south of the border. This is an EU directive. It doesn't necessarily, I hasten to add now, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't necessarily have to be Northern Ireland. It can be any other EU country. But what uh, there are um, a number of uh, guidelines that people must adhere to. Can you elaborate on that a little, please? Yes, the, you're quite right. Any, any member of, um, who is resident within the Republic of Ireland can travel to another EU state, and that could be Lithuania, Poland, Latvia. Um, and indeed, in the front of the Irish News here in Belfast this morning, it talks about patients coming from Northern Ireland who are going to Eastern Europe. However, the worry is not just the travel and the costs associated with travel, which are not reimbursed, but also the quality of care you may get in another state. All right, now, now, we expect here in Ireland. All right, that's the first thing I want to reiterate. Um, Kathleen's story, um, we probably didn't include the fact, and we're going to do so now, that the expenses, travel costs, petrol, fuel, all that kind of thing, wear and tear in cars, that isn't taken into account. The scheme will reimburse you purely for the cost of the procedure and associated costs, i.e. Uh, the care at the hospital, aftercare, that kind of thing. And it will also cover the initial um, appointment with consultants, etc. Correct me on that if I'm wrong, Mark. That's correct. And that is one of the reasons why Belfast is so popular, because we're talking about 40, 50 euros of diesel to get here not three, four, five hundred on a flight and hotels and subsistence thereafter going to other parts of Europe. So how does it work, tell me? Well, the patient goes to their GP with the, the, the condition that they already have and requests the referral to be made to Kingsbridge in Belfast. And that referral, the very moment they have that bit of paper, that is them eligible to start the journey. They contact us and we take the whole journey from there for them. We hold their hand. We have what we call a concierge person in the hospital that will fill in all the forms, explain everything to them, give them the prices, give them any shortfall if there is one, and hold their hand the whole way through the journey. It is a complex journey, but it's easy when if you, we do it because we do it so often every day. We're able to, to take the patient through the appropriate steps. Right. The important bit is when they don't have to wait on a waiting list. You don't need to be on a waiting list for any period of time. So this is not about being on a waiting list for a year or a month. The day your GP says, I'm going to send you for a consultation with a consultant, that is you eligible to come to Belfast and see the consultant in Belfast instead of waiting two, three, four years for another hospital in the Republic of Ireland. Now, it's important that, uh, again, in Kathleen's case, and it's important we remind people that um, some lending institutions, at least in Kathleen's case, the credit unions, are prepared to provide a bridging loan um, for those who may not be in a position to afford, and I take it these people are in the majority, those who cannot afford the procedure, what have you, and then that will in time be reimbursed by the HSE. Uh, but uh, it's important we remind people that um, the amount that will be repaid is the amount that the treatment would cost in Ireland or the cost of your treatment abroad if that is less. That's right. So in, uh, in Northern Ireland, private hospitals tend to be in and around the same price as public hospitals in the Republic of Ireland. And that is due to a number of factors, starting right. with the cost of, of living and procedures to be done, but also the exchange rate, which is very favourable for people coming from south right. to north. So generally speaking, the larger procedures like cattling, a hip, a knee, that type, big procedures, mm -hmm. they tend not to have much of a shortfall, if any. Right, but, 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 but in some cases there could be a shortfall and that will not be reimbursed by the HSE. That's right, absolutely. Right. So, based on your own experience, numbers-wise, on average, what are we looking at shortfall-wise? Um, a very difficult question. I to know. Answer. I understand. Um, that, yeah. But what I can say is, um, the procedures that are higher in thousands, sort of six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand sterling, generally have very little shortfall. 
or one to two hundred euros. The smaller procedures that are in the round a thousand up to three thousand, they generally will have a shortfall, and that could be maybe 40, 30, 40 percent of the old fee. The exception at that lower end is cataract surgery, right. where there is no shortfall. Cataract can be replaced in Belfast with no shortfall within a week or so. Right. But you do understand that, because, you know, it's not all a bed of roses, if you'll pardon the pun, but you do <laughs> understand that, um, you know, in some cases, 40 to 50 percent could be... Uh, the straw that breaks the camel's back for the person who needs the treatment because in many cases they are public patients on a waiting list and they are there for a reason. They can't afford private treatment. Yes, and we're very mindful of that at Kingsbridge and while we can't change the rules around the EU directive, what we do is inform the patient before they have the surgery of how much they will get back. Yeah. through the ready reckoner and through a letter of authority which comes from the HSE that explains for this procedure we will pay you X yeah. and then they know from us the total outlay is Y and they can then determine if there's any shortfall mm. or if there is one, is that manageable for me? Right, but, but, but based... It's not manageable. Uh, yeah, sorry. But, sorry, Mark, based on your own experience, if the shortfall yeah. isn't manageable, how yeah. many people from the South have made initial contact only then at the 11th hour to realise I can't manage, I can't make up the shortfall? Very few, very few. It was okay. something that I thought of the outlay of this a year or two years ago, this will be a problem. Yes. But that has not manifested itself. As people are saying that their relatives or someone else will fill that gap for them, given the impact it makes on that person's life within a week or two, rather than waiting a year or two for the surgery. Right. So very, very few, and I can't put my hand on anyone that I know of through the system that have said no, right. I can't progress. I take it, Kathleen, I know you're listening to this conversation. You mentioned that, you know, uh, there was no shortfall that you had to make up. But based on your experience um, with this scheme, you would have scrimped and scraped to make up the shortfall, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, there's no problem. Anything to get rid of the pain, yeah. <laughs> that'd have been it. You know, but the, the only expenses that I was out was just a consultant's fee and uh, my last appointment so that yeah. was it right yeah because Mark I wanted to ask you that question first and foremost uh, the treatments now you can only speak for Kingsbridge um, and yeah. the, the, the treatments that are available at your hospital under the scheme include um, almost everything except for cardiac surgery mm-hmm we would cover more or less everything else that doesn't require an intensive care stay. Um, The the, the procedures that are covered by the scheme itself is everything that is covered by the HSE. And the major exceptions to that would be um, fertility treatments and also cosmetic surgery. They would both be excluded from that. But for the vast majority of people on waiting this, 80, 90% of things that are covered and can be done in Kingsbridge, hips, knees, cataracts, that type of thing. All right. And again, just to remind people, what's required here is a a referral from a GP uh, or a consultant or um, it could be a a nurse or in some cases a healthcare worker. That that will suffice. Well, the vast majority of patients that we have coming through the HSE demand that it is a GP, their own GP. There is other schemes in, in community care things that can be funded outside of this that are are not, um, can be given by other workers, but right. to our experience, the GP is the best. The GP is the best. And it's good right. to keep the GP informed and this, this is happening as well. Of course. For guidance when you come back home after surgery and that aftercare phase. So I would recommend GPs would be the way to do this. Right. And just to confirm, the extras would then include the initial appointment with your consultant, for example. That's charged separately, is it? Well, there, that's where you will get a shortfall. Generally, a consultant in Northern Ireland is round about £180 sterling, depending which consultant. Right. And the, the reimbursement rate back from the HSE for that is 130 So there is a shortfall there, and right. that's €130. Euros. So there is a bit of a shortfall there. Uh-huh. And then again, for the review appointment, again, there may be a short, short, a shortfall. All right, so in other we're words... Talking in, we're talking the element of about €100 Euros in total there for those two episodes, but they are refundable. It's just they're usually as a shortfall. It's the surgical bit in the middle that generally we're finding the bigger procedures, there is no shortfall. But but it's not unusual for one to have to undergo maybe a number of reviews post-op. 
generally speaking, it would be one one review six weeks out from the surgery, mm. and that could be it for up to a year afterwards. If could it's be required. it. Could be it. It could be it. And vast majority of time, that is at six weeks post surgery. If the patient is fit and well, mm. that is them discharged from care unless they present with any yeah. further problem. All right. And how, again, just to say to people, once you you arrive at your hospital for admission for the procedure or surgery, you yeah. must have funds with you, um, payment in full in advance, and then the relevant paperwork is carried out or processed. And as Kathleen explained, in your case, Kathleen, you were fully reimbursed within? Uh, 12 weeks. 12 weeks. All right. So for people who are taking out a bridging loan, but again, as I said, uh, based on Kathleen's experience, uh, the credit unions we know, and I'm sure other institutions also, are in a position uh, to put in place a bridging arrangement. Oh, but, but, but again, Mark, I am surprised, given the seriousness of our waiting list issue on this side of the border, I'm surprised mm -hmm. that you're not snowed under. And is it all down to awareness, I wonder? Absolutely. We first started the scheme about two years ago with our first patients coming through, and only now in the last six, eight weeks has this started the snowball. And I think that's through to people like yourselves making patients aware and also the, the um, approval from the National Association of GPs in the Republic of Ireland who have approved not just the scheme's use, but also approved Kingsbridge in Belfast as one of its centres they came to visit and inspect. And they're satisfied with the level of care that comes from there. So that type of activity puts the rubber stamp and removes this too-good-to-be-true phrase. So it is now becoming mainstream. It has taken two years, but it is real, and it can help thousands of patients across the Republic of Ireland. All right, look, it's a business at the end of the day, albeit a very caring one, I'm sure, and you're competing Absolutely. for business, and good luck to you on that. And Kathleen is a, a, a perfect example as to how this particular scheme can change people's lives for the better. Um, I'm not going to give contact telephone numbers for any hospital or any establishment north of the border or in any country. My advice is go right now to your GP and ask them for their views and advice in relation to the cross-border health care directive. And I think it could be the answer to all your problems if you're currently on a waiting list awaiting an operation or a procedure. Uh, Kathleen, thank you so much for coming into studio and sharing your story with us. And I'm delighted all is well now. And yeah. also, um, Mark Regan from Kingsbridge Private Hospital in Belfast, thank you also for taking the call today. Could I just say, yes, Joe... Yes, Kathleen. Sorry, that if anybody that is going down to the Kingsbridge Hospital, that if you have your X-ray with you type of thing of whatever problem you have, yeah. and uh, it will save you time as well and a 100 sterling to get an x-ray done down in the hospital so that would save you a hundred as well okay. because you will need to get that done so you can get it on, put on a disc in any of the hospitals that you attend All right. in the south well said thanks indeed for that thank you both for joining us on the show today back in a moment